And then tap it gently. Gently and color if it gets large. Once you're on the ski, you strap the key to a brand new button. Uh, this is something that if you get sucked up in your intake grate, that will jam the impeller if it gets lodged in the wrong part. So this is definitely something you need to be careful of, just as an example. The smallest thing I've had jam my impeller before was a small piece of bark about that big. Uh, when you're selecting a boat ramp for jet skiing, first you need to make sure at low tide and high tide it's going to be suitable. Some ramps at low tide, you won't have enough room to actually push your ski out because it will be way too shallow and literally some ramps are like that. Um, check the reviews on ramps before you go down because those reviews will give you an indicator of whether it's good past experience or bad past experience. Cool, so at the moment down here at Kaima, it's high tide, a um, lot of concrete. This is good for everybody. So this means that you don't have to worry about the algae on the low tide part of the ramp and potentially losing your car in the water. So when I first brought this car and I took it down to that boat ramp, um, it was low tide. I held the handbrake on, had my foot on the brake, went to take my foot off the brake and the car started sliding back in the ramp and that was with a brand new Trident. We had to change the tyres from the standard tyres that were provided with the car to all-terrain tyres. We asked the, the guys at the tyre shop what do they recommend and that was the suggestion they made. These tyres are, are best for um, on-road and off-road so they give you that extra traction that you require so it doesn't slide into the ramp. Now if you have any kids in the car, never have your kids in the car whilst the car is sitting on the boat ramp without somebody in it. If the car slides into the ramp, your kids are gone. So always have someone covering their brake. All right, two things when you're putting it in the ramp, straps off and make sure that your bungs are done up. So my bungs are already done up here. So if it's hanging out like this, please make sure you do it up. Otherwise you are going to sink your jet ski. So remember two things, straps off, bungs done up, and then you're ready to put it in. When you want to take a jet ski off the trailer by itself, make sure all of that's connected before you put it in the ramp. Don't take any of that off before you get here. Golden rule is turn it on, hold down the on button, start the ski, tap it in forward. That way the ski is staying on the trailer, it's not going to come off. We take, we take off the chain. Take off this latch, we unwind it, strap that back up, and we're all good. We make sure we have our wetsuit material pants on, we have our life jacket on, everything's ready to go. Once you're on the ski, you strap the key onto the life jacket, you got your reverse bucket, you got your accelerator and then we back it off to the trailer. When put your ski back on the trailer, you have to line it up, come in slow. This is in idle, zero to one kilometer per hour. I've just tapped it in forward. Now if we panic, squeeze the brake. It's still gonna float. Come in really, really, really slow so the front of the ski is resting between the wheels and then tap it gently to get it up. All right, once it's up, disconnect the key. Climb off the ski. Wind up your wheel, lock it in so it doesn't come backwards. Then do up your safety chain. Once all that's done up, you can pull the key off and turn the jet ski off because if you do not turn the jet ski off, you're going to take it out of the water and you're going to overheat your exhaust. Maybe even damage your carbon seal. You damage your carbon seal if you overheat the exhaust. So when you're trying to work out how far to put your trailer into the ramp, use these wheels as a guide. So 
you, you can see two of the three wheels there. I put a, could have gone in a little bit more, but I didn't need to. The ski's uh, propulsion system, the intake grate was sitting in the water, which is enough to keep it on the trailer. If the trailer's too far out and you turn the ski on, it's just gonna roll off the trailer into the water. Okay, so you need to make sure it's the, the arse of it is sitting in the water. The other guide that you can use instead of those wheels. I like to adjust my mirror so I can see the car tire. And I put it so the car tire is in the water about where it is now, and usually that's right. Okay, but looking at those, I probably could have gone in a little bit more, but it was okay. I was able to take it off and put it on. Cool.